Today we're going through neck pain and especially what postures and exercises you need to do when you've got neck pain if you've been say sitting for too long or sitting in a non-ideal environment like a bad workstation environment perhaps it's a setup at home that's not so good and it's also for those people who've got disc problems like a disc bulge or a disc herniation in their neck Going through the do's and don'ts, and this is especially for uh, one of my followers on Instagram who asked, what do I do for neck disc herniations? What are the do's and don'ts I do for that? So we're gonna cover some of that today. We're gonna cover a bit of posture, cover a bit of exercises, and what you should be looking at doing throughout the day. Let's look at your posture first. So in a setup, say, and this happens mostly at computers, but it does happen in other jobs and other types of industries, but if you're one of those people who is sort of desk bound or you're, you've got a workstation and if you're working at home, sometimes it's not ideal because it's not your work office environment. One of the main like causes of disc problems, well, is genetics and family history. But the biggest environmental cause is your posture and sitting. And what I mean by that is when you sit and you sit for a long period of time, so this is sustained sitting and a, sort of environment that is forcing you into one thing that you're looking at, what tends to happen is you go from a good posture, if you start off like that, and then you end up slumping at the lower back, like you'll sit your lower back into the chair. Hey, that feels normal, but what happens is that makes your upper body come forward. And if you notice, my head's gone forward. So instead of being upright, where my head is up like a plumb line in line with my body, it's actually gone forward. Now there's two things that happen with that. One, because it's gone forward, there's a shear load through the neck. So all the muscles at the back of my neck here, so all the muscles that run down the back of the spine are trying to have to hold on even more. When I'm upright, they sit there statically holding on quite nicely. I give my muscles in the front, muscles in the back, similar to muscles in your back and muscles in your core, okay? holding me at a static level, nice and easy upright. When I go forward, they have to work harder. So immediately when I'm like this, the muscles in here are working at a bit of a disadvantage. So they fatigue early, they tire out, they get tighter. And this is where you, know, you might get knots in your trap muscles, you might get some fatigue or tightness in the back of the head. You may even be starting to get headaches. Just because the muscles are working so hard, they get so tight, there's a lot of pulling going on, and that leads to some of the problems. But the second thing is, when you're in this position, what tends to happen is you go into what we call lower cervical flexion. So the lower part of your spine, this is a bit crude, this spine is broken apart, but the lower your part of your spine comes forward, all right? Now what that does is puts a bit of posterior disc pressure increase to the back wall of the discs. So you'll see five, six, seven, when you're in this position here, the pressure's increase to the back wall of the disc. Now, your discs are strong and durable and they last a long time. Some people with the wrong environment, they don't last as long. And what happens is the pressure builds up and then starts to bulge the disc. The wall weakens and you start having herniations and problems. So when I said causes, it's the posture like this causes the pressure change problem. It's a mechanical force so that's constantly grinding away and pushing backwards. So when I go forward with my head, by pressure my disc is going backwards and that bulges the wall out slowly over time. It happens very gradually. You don't know it's going on. You just have a bit of a stiff neck. Then one day, wham, you've got a disc bulge. So if you can try and fix the cause of that, because if you're going to You've been sitting in a desk for 10 years, you're going to do another 20. You don't want to be going through and causing problems down the track. And it's all well and good to sit upright, but part of your workstation environment is going to improve that. So if you're one of those people that's sitting at home with a laptop and you're constantly in a bad sort of chair, maybe it's, maybe not even in a chair, maybe you're on something like a, the lounge or something and you're like this, you know your head's going forward. So you're going to have to fix it down here. All right, so that means the chair has to be upright, has to be decent. You may even want to put a lumbar roll sitting in the back there, which just props you upright, so you are sitting backwards. But there are other factors in the, disc, in, in the workstation that can help you as well. If this monitor is down low, I'm going to be craning my head forward. So I'm actually going to go not just into slump, 
even if I'm upright and my monitor's down, so if I put this monitor down to a laptop size, I'm going to have to look down at it. I'm going to go into flexion, all right? And that's going to cause, over time, posterior dish pressure as well because I'm coming out of my nice upright and I'm going forward like that. I'm hinging forward. So don't make a mistake. It's not just about slumping in the lower back. You might have a great upright posture, but if this is too low, you're going to look down as well. Now, if you do both at the same time, if you slump here and look down, you can imagine what problems you're going to start happening. All right. So fix this. I get people to either just get a monitor for a start because they've got a laptop. Get a monitor. All right. Get it up. Get it high. Or put their laptop up and get a plug-in keyboard, whatever suits. The other thing too is when you're working on something, this keyboard needs to be here so I can stay back. If it's forward, like if you go, oh, I'm just going to do something here and write something down, and then you leave your keyboard there, all of a sudden you're doing this. Okay, so you go from that position. So you want to go, nah, put that back. Little things like that made a massive difference to your posture and your setup. And that's half the fix. You know, we talk about exercises for the next. Just getting that right is half the battle and 50% of fixing it. The other stuff you can do during the day. And that's where it comes into exercise. So I hope that makes sense about what you've got to do posture. The exercises are sort of like the same thing. They're just reversing what you're doing wrong in the first place. So if you're slumping forward and bending forward, we're trying to do the reverse of that. So what I suggest you do is get out of the office chair, and I'll talk about standing desk in a minute, but get out of the office chair and do this somewhere else. You can do it standing, or you can do it perched, or do it sitting, but just get out of that chair for a little bit and take a break. Or you can do it in a, you know, a dining room chair. But what I want you doing is three things, just three to start with to help reverse that posture problem. First one is retraction. Now, you've probably seen this before, but it's gold. And what it is, is if you think about if I slumped and had my head forward, that's protraction. I'm trying to do the reverse. So I want myself in a good environment here. So upright, neutral here, hold yourself up. Retraction is that movement there. So it's the opposite direction of the slump going forward. And so if I'm going to retraction, which is keeping my eyes straight. So if I look at something ahead of me, I can focus on say that picture on the wall, Focus on that, keep my eyes on that, okay? If I put two fingers on my chin, I think I'm gonna go, right, I wanna pull away from the picture, but keep my eye away from my fingers, keep my eyes in line, and then just gently return, all right? So start from neutral. So don't start slumped and try and pull back, it's gonna hurt. Come upright, start neutral, pull back past neutral, so there's almost like the same amount of retraction as you went forward in the bad posture and repeat that. Nice and slow, pull back. Now if you're acute, you've got raging pain, you're going to find your pull back, oh that really hurts. Just be careful with that. So make sure you're just going back to where the pain is and back off. Don't hammer into the pain thinking like the more you push the better it's going to get. Just go to the pain and back off. By the time you've done sort of 20 or 30 of those, you may find it's eased up a bit and all of a sudden your neck movement's a little bit better. But you've got to repeat that, you know, almost every hour to two hours when you're in that acute stage, you know. So if you're thinking, how many reps and sets do I do? When it's sore, probably every two hours. You're doing 10, 20, 30 of these to just help slowly reverse that process of a disc bulge herniation pressure problem that you've got going on back there to try and get it a bit more centered, a bit more stabilized. When that happens, you'll find the muscle tightness that's happening around the back of the neck backs off. Some of that muscle tightness is because you've developed it, because you're doing this all the time, but also it's trying to protect you. Okay, It's trying to lock you down and stop you moving. Now that adds and amplifies your pain a bit. So if we can try and reverse that pressure to tell your brain, hey, less disc pressure, I'm feeling better, you'll get some of that relaxation through the back of the neck and it won't be so sore. So that'll be your first one you do, okay? And I'd do that as your absolute priority. The second thing I want you to do, and you'll probably find this, if you've got a disc problem at the moment, you'll probably find extension and looking backwards is not great for you. So you go, oh yeah, that's no good. So we've got to fix that. And looking forward is not the answer because that's how you caused it. So we've got to try and go backwards, but 
people say, well, yeah, how do I go backwards in a saw like that? So what you do is you provide an environment for your back, your neck to go backwards into, like a support structure, but also that environment tricks your brain a little bit about, hey, it's okay to go backwards. Because some of this, that painfulness, is your body spasming and saying, don't do it. So if you put your hands around the back of your neck, this is called cervical extension. So you find that bony point, so that big bump you've got there. Some people got a small bump, some people like me have got a big bump around my T1. You put your fingers as low as you can go sort of on that, around that bump. So you're in like a V, if you like. And then rest them there. And what I want you to do before you go backwards is just do a little bit of that retraction that you learned before. So a little bit of retraction into your hands. And then you'll find you can go backwards and then you can rest your head in your hands. And you'll find you can go back quite a long way because you've got the support here. And then you return and then back to neutral. Start again, little chin in, little retraction, slowly hinging backwards at your hands and rest your skull in your pinkies, if you like. So you're resting it in the spot here. You're resting the skull in that. And because you've got that support there, you're never going to go too far. Your muscles can relax because you know there's a support there. It's like bending backwards and knowing there's something there to catch you. All right. So that is really helpful. Plus it provides a bit of a block to go too far. You'll find you get way more movement with less pain or with no pain with that. Now, if you can repeat that. So if you're going... Repetition slowly, very slowly. That's not rip, you know, fast ones, it's just real slow. Again, what you're doing, you're doing the opposite of flexion, opposite of going forward all the time. Now, you can't, like in flexion, that you know, causes problems all the time. You can't just sit there in extension and expect this to get better. You've got to do repetitions because you're trying to slowly move things around in your neck. You don't want to sustain movement going backwards. It's just not going to give you any great result, you've got to do repetitions. And the hard thing about this is, is doing it all the time, like doing it during the day, doing it on breaks, it takes a while, it takes days and weeks to get it better, but you've got to start somewhere. And trust me, if you trust the process of doing these repetitions, it will start improving if the problem is coming from you doing all this sort of stuff, okay? So retractions first, retraction extension is your second one in sitting. Then I want you to go for your rotation because the rotation, just like in the lumbar spine, the rotation really helps these disc type problems. So I would be going for standing upright again or sitting upright and doing a rotation but retraction first. So little retraction and then very robotically looking around to one side. And you may find that this is where people have pain on one side more than the other. So they might go, okay, when I get around to there and then I feel that pain zapping down into my trap or down my medial board on a scap, and they feel like there's something wrong with their rhomboids or they're tight down there. It's probably pain referral coming out of your neck and going into your rhomboids. So rule is, if you can go to the painful side first and get that cleared first, rather than the non-painful side. So if my pain was sort of off to the right, I'd be going, okay, chin in, rotate around, feel that tightness kicks in, and then use this hand here it's almost what we call a pistol grip. It's fingers on your chin, and I want you to look around over your shoulder and push it to where the pain is, and slowly back off. You go again, chin in, upright back, shoulders neutral, look around, look over your shoulder, get to the tightest point, get that opposite hand and push it and look around. So what you're trying to do is stretch that into rotation and get back your rotation range. Get your movement back, loosen your joints up, then you'll find things back off it. Push it too hard, it's gonna to get too sore. But that movement, one, it helps your whole movement, movement of your upper spine, gets, reduces disc problems, but again, when I talked about this, the opposite of, opposite of things, when you're at your desk, you're just motionless, sitting, not rotating. So if you're not rotating, this is rotating. So this is moving. Joints love movement. So you're just trying to get that spine moving from being a, such a sedentary, static posture like that. So those are my sort of three that I would start with. Attraction, retraction, extension, and rotation. And then from there, you can work on other things like strength, side flexion, all sorts of scapular work, other things. But they're your sort of almost like your first aid. 
One more thing, what I would try and do is, you know, I, I'm a big advocate of standing desks for people who have problems sitting. Now, people say like, oh, well, I don't have a standing desk at home. Try and get at least something like a kitchen bench. Remember, your office desk is 700, usually 700 high. That's fine for when you're sitting down, okay? Your kitchen bench, usually, not your kitchen table, your kitchen bench, is usually about one meter high. Now that's fine for short people, but for tall people it's still not high enough. So when I'm at here, I can't have my keyboard down here, and I certainly can't have my laptop down there, because that's even worse, right? One, I am standing upright, but the neck position I have to get to look down at something is terrible. So even if I have my laptop or, or monitor up on a bit of box, I'm still looking down. I have to have that here. So if you look at me, I'm six foot, this is where I need to have the top of my monitor, at my eye height. So you imagine how high it has to be. But if you can get that set up, I mean obviously you get a standing desk, but if you can't organize that, you've got a small apartment, you've just got a kitchen bench, just get your keyboard up on something, a couple of boxes, get your monitor up on something safe and sturdy and have it there. And that's where you might have, you just plug in your laptop and have that there, and then you can spend half the time standing there half the time sitting down there, okay? But when you're standing, you don't have to worry about the slump part. So remember we talked about how like in here, if you slump, then that's bad for you, okay? It's hard to hold yourself upright. When you're standing, you just, you can't really slump for very long, okay? You can't, you can't do that. So you're more likely to have your head back in a good position, but stops the, this part. You just gotta worry about that part by looking down, by having everything upright. I hope that helps. See you next time.